2023. Um, this meeting is being live streamed and it is of course available uh, as the meeting uh, progresses. Um, with that, we'll open up the uh, agenda um, and with that, we'll go for apologies for absence, although I don't think there's any this, uh, this month. No? no? Excellent, okay. Okay, then going on to uh, minutes of the last meeting held in pages 5 to 14, that's the 21st of September 2023. Any comments? No? Okay. Excellent, it's agreed, yep. Good, good. Excellent. Items of urgent business. Um, there are no items of urgent business. Uh, declarations of interest. Do we have any declarations of interest? No, no, okay. Uh, declarations of receipt of any correspondence. Um, I've had one email in relation to the Greysteads. That was a uh, Hannah, uh, Hannah Garlinge. I understand that uh, we all would have received that. So on behalf of the whole committee, I can confirm that uh, that uh, correspondence has been received. Um, anything else? Uh, Councillor Lydiard? Chair, on this, uh, this item 23, oblique 00610, oblique FUL, I have actually written documents um, complaining about the, the siting of this uh, youth centre and um, I've also mentioned it in the forum as well so I'd like to be excluded from the vote on this if that's okay. Certainly, no, thank you and uh, thank you for making us aware of that. Um, right, that's that. Okay, um, yeah, no, I agree with that, thank you. Um, right, planning appeals found on pages uh, 15 to 22. Um, are there any comments on the planning appeals? Uh, any, any, any questions on anything that's been lodged or anything like that? No? Okay, and then uh, a public address to the planning committee, uh, which is item seven. And the only update I will make, um, I know obviously there's, there's a little bit of interest or a little bit more interest in um, land adjacent to the flagship centre, London Road, Tilbury, found on pages 79 to 120. Uh, as such, we will move that to the top of the agenda. I understand, Chris, it's your only item as well here this evening, and all speakers are here. So uh, if that's okay, um, we will um, we'll start with that item. And uh, Councillor Lydiard, um, Respectfully, if you, you want to, um, yeah, cheers, thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Chris, if you'd be so kind as to present your report. Uh, that's item 11, 23 stroke 00610 stroke FUL, found on pages 79 to 120. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. This uh, planning application is a proposal for a youth facility on Anchors Fields, uh, and this would provide a range of activities, including a sports hall, fitness centre, boxing and martial arts room, an indoor climbing wall, an external multi-use games area, stroke kick pitch, an outdoor recreation area together with facilities for arts and craft, health and well-being, a music suite, te teaching kitchen, a cafe and a performing arts studio. The youth facility would be used by eight to 19 year olds uh, and would be staffed um, throughout that time and mainly from 4 p.m. to 10 p.m. after school and college times, although the permitted hours of use that the applicant is looking for um, and is subject to a planning condition is between 8 and 10 p.m. The uh, applicant is a, a charity organisation called Onsite, uh, and they are the applicants um, for this application and the red line with, around it. Let's come on to the, the slides. Um, so the red line, as you can see, covers that part of uh, south, south part or, or western part of Anchorfields Park. Uh, it does include the existing uh, sports court, as it's shown on the plan, but that's we often call those moogers or multi-use games areas. Uh, that would be lost as a result of this development, but I'll come on to that in a moment. 
as you can see, uh, there's the flagship centre to the west um, and there's residential either side of, of the streets. Um, as the roads uh, radial out from the Tilbury Town Centre area. Here are some uh, images um, just to give you an idea of, of the surroundings. Uh, as you can see, this is taken from the south looking north and this one's taken from the east looking west towards Tilbury Town Centre and you can see the, uh, the site in there which also in addition to the sports uh, games area does have uh, a lawned area as part of the park and a, and a number of trees which would be removed as a part of this proposal although replacement trees are proposed as part of a landscaping um, scheme with the development. Uh, just some photos to show the, um, the, the site area in terms of the context of the surrounding area. And there's another one of those to give you an idea of Hume Road and, and London Road, uh, which are the roads that uh, join just outside the site. Now, these, uh, this plan and the next one are taken from the Tilbury Town Investment Plan. Now, the Tilbury Town Investment Plan was produced by the Tilbury Town Deal Board and it includes a vision, a strategy, and a number of projects to improve and benefit the town of Tilbury and its riverside location. Within the uh, investment plan is reference to a youth centre building and, and outside sports pitches on the Ankerfield sites. Uh, as you can sort of make out here, it's where the number two is shown on that, on that plan. Um, it should be noted that the Tilbury Town investment plan is not a supporting planning document, so it's not uh, a document that sits in the planning policy remit but it is a document that's been produced uh, to guide um, uh, investment and, and potential opportunities for developments within the uh, Tilbury Town area. And that's another angle looking from the other side uh, in terms of, of that. In, um, and that's where this application derives from in terms of this was done before the application came in uh, in terms of, of that. Uh, just to give an idea, uh, this is not an actual actual red line as, as per the application site, but just give you an idea in terms of what, where the location of the proposal is in terms of the red line uh, that's dashed there, uh, and you can see what's existing on the ground as well from this aerial shot. This is the proposed um, block plan, uh, and it shows the layout of the proposal. Uh, the kick pitch is to the north of the building, or rear of the building, so in within the park, looking within the park area, but it is all fenced in. All of this site in terms of the red line around the park area uh, would, would be a uh, form of boundary, so it's not easily accessible in terms of just anybody using the park. It's only for the youth facility that people would need to come in via the entrance to gain access to that kick pitch for the, uh, the benefit of young people of, of Tilbury and perhaps the wider borough too. Uh, so the entrance on the south side, um, and as you can see, there would be a small vehicle parking area provided and a new vehicle entrance off, off of Hume Avenue, along with a drop-off area for uh, people dropping off their children, um, as I say, between 8 and 12, uh, 8 and 19 years old, uh, that would use this facility. There's attenuation basin shown as well in terms of surface water management, just so you're aware of that. There are, is new planting shown and there is a new paving area shown because, as you've probably seen from the photos before, there isn't any um, existing pavement along this um, part of the road, just where these little knee rail fences are. There isn't anything there at the present. Let's come back to that. So this is an artist's impression of what it could look like. Um, so this is from the applica applications detail, application documents, um, just to give an idea of uh, a sketched image. Uh, this plan shows that it is internally a two-storey building, uh, although the sports hall has um, uh, obviously a much higher ceiling from that point of view. But this layered plan gives you an idea of what happens on each ground level, or each level rather, uh, and you've got the outdoor kick pitch and re recreation area as shown there outside. Uh, what's on the ground floor, then you can see what's on the first floor. Uh, and on the roof, um, in terms of sustainable energy needs and things like that, there's um, photovoltaics, uh, like solar panels for, for energy um, production, along with these wind catchers as part of the sustainability credentials of the building. This is the ground floor layout as proposed. So all those rooms and, and uh, functions I, I mentioned earlier, uh, some of them are shown there, obviously sports hall the, and the, the rooms as shown in the plan. And there is a first floor plan 
just to show how that would um, be laid out too. Some elevation plans. Um, so the top one is the front elevation uh, that fronts onto the London Road area. And then you've got the, all, all the other elevations shown too. And that's, uh, there's a few plans now just show an artist's impression of how, this, how it would look within the site uh, and within the, the surroundings of the park uh, and the road junctions in the area. Um, now on site, the applicant do have a number of these youth centres um, up and down the country. This one is including the information pack just to, to give you an idea what one could look like. The layout is slightly different on the Tilbury example that's proposed, but this is the one not that far away from us over in uh, Dagenham. Uh, it's, uh, it's within a park area again like this, uh, and that is what's um, ex existing at present. So the benefit of people living over there in terms of the youth, youth as a youth facility have access to. So just come to a summary of the application. So the proposal would create a new youth zone and outdoor space for the benefit of young people of Tilbury and Thurrock. It does result in the list um, the loss of the existing uh, public open or an area of public open space is clearly park that would remain uh, and the loss of the multi games area on Ancus Fields. Although it's not proposed to replace that through this planning application and the applicant doesn't have control over the ability to do that, uh, I understand through the town board and through the council's regeneration and parks team that there is funding available for relocation of the Mooga, which is obviously a free-to-use facility at, at present for people using the park. Whether that's to be relocated um, on this park or another park in Tilbury, that's still to be decided, and it's not part of this planning application, but just to reassure everybody that there, there is plans to replace that within the area for the benefit of free-to-use uh, a Mooga pitch that would be lost as a result of this. Um, this is quite a balanced decision, because as I say, we're losing that Mooga and you're losing the open space, but the benefits of this youth zone um, and the outdoor space that comes with it is clearly beneficial to the young people of Tilbury and Thurrock, and on balance, the principle of that development is considered acceptable. The proposal would create, as you've seen from the slides, a high-quality design development. It is uh, in an easily accessible location, very close to the town centre area, uh, with bus stop facilities. Um, the station's about a 15, 20-minute walk. There are no other objections to any other material planning considerations and the recommendation is for approval subject to a 106 agreement set out in the uh, report. Um, just clarify that for you. So uh, that is for um, highway contribution in terms of financial contribution of £10,000 towards highway improvement works to parking controls in the vicinity of the development and for the applicant to enter into a Section 278 agreement uh, with regard amendments to the highway, such as the proposed access, the footways, the drop off and pick off zones. The application is subject to a number of planning conditions as well. They're all listed in the report. I think there's 28 in total uh, that deal with a, 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 a range of things materials, landscaping, uh, the hours of use. Um, there's a full list in there. Um, and that's a recommendation, Chairman. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much for that, Chris. Um, so with that, we'll go to questions. Does anyone have any questions to start with? Uh, Councillor Watson and then uh, Steve Taylor. Thank you, Chair. Um, thank you for your presentation. Uh, just a, I just wanted to get clarification. Could you tell me if the field is actually protected under a covenant don't know under a covenant because that sits outside the, the planning application process but I know it's designated public open space in terms of a local plan allocation and therefore planning policy seeks to protect the public open space uh, as, as a general planning policy in the local plan but also ref reflective of that in the MPPF. Okay um, I think there is issue there's pieces of land around this borough that's actually been gifted to the to the people or the community, or the children, or whatever there is. There's, there's bits in Chadwell, some areas on the flat iron they, that was gifted. There's bits in Purfleet that's been gifted. Is the anchor field been gifted in any way like that to the community under a field in trust? I'm aware the fields in trust are involved and have an interest in the land, but I understand the land is, is um, owned by the council. 
as part of and is managed by the parks and uh, recreation team. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. So my other question I wanted to ask is that um, obviously the, the mugger is going to be um, removed from it. However, I've noted here that um, they would be considered at the council's expense to replace the mugger somewhere. Um, can you just tell us where you, you're thinking about that place and where you think the money is going to be coming from the council? Uh, yeah, sure. I mean, I, I refer you to the comments in the, from the regeneration officer, which are in the consultation uh, section of the report. And I'm, I'm only relaying what they've said to me in terms of the part of the, um, the town's uh, deal board fu has secured funding or is securing funding. Um, so it's not coming directly from the council, as I understand it, but there's funding that will be available for replacement of the MUGA, not within this application site potentially within Anchor Fields or potentially within another park area within Tilbury. I'm really cynical about the Tilbury bid, to say the least. It's, it's a beautiful picture, and part of in that picture, you've got to recognise there's an IMC that's not going to even be built now. So it's very, very ambitious. So when we are building a youth centre, and then we're saying we're going to remove a mug and put it somewhere else, but we don't really know where the money's coming from, but it's in a bid that we don't know what the bid is, um, I'm beginning to get a bit frightened about that, because I can, I can actually see the Tilbury residents probably being worse off than better off. So um, I just want more clarification, really, on if the planning is agreed, will the, the funds absolutely be there? And bearing in mind you're putting it on the anchor field. Has there been any other sites that you have considered outside of this? For instance, a fire station that has just got a load of hoarding around it and nothing... Nothing's happening with that either. Thanks. Uh, it's the, the applicant has um, looked at various sites um, before this, came, this application came in, uh, and it's listed within the application documents in terms of other sites within the Tilbury area for this youth centre. Uh, they've discounted those due to either not being available, uh, land ownership issues, not being the right size. There's a list of those within the application documents that have come in, and we questioned that in terms of, you know, at pre-app stage, what other sites have been considered other than this one. Uh, so they have looked at other sites in terms of that pr process, um, and this is the one they've chosen um, to a to, to obviously put the youth centre on, and that is the one that's obviously the one subject to this application. So the other ones have been discounted, um, and this is their, their preference. And obviously, as an application, it's come in, it's for us to determine whether this is acceptable or not. Um, and obviously, we've, we've, we, we think the views in, as a balanced decision in terms of, of, of what I've said in terms of the presentation is that this site is acceptable for this development. Okay, thank you. Uh, Steve Taylor. Thanks, Chair. Uh, Chris, I, first of all, I, I've, I've always had a problem in my life with three and four letter abbreviations. What does MUGA or MUGA stand for? I could have a guess, but I'd kind of like to... Multi-use games area. Okay, fine. I just, I hate three letter abbreviations because not everybody always understands them. And, and I think it's fairly important that they do. So... Carrying on really from where Councillor Watson was, because because my question is very similar, and I'm struggling with this concept of who is who owns the land, and from what I can gather, you're saying that's the council. And are they then proposing to gift that to the developer, or or is the developer buying it, or because I'm assuming that this sensor is is going to generate an income for them. It's my understanding the land is owned by the council, but the, um, it's been leased perhaps on a long lease 
it's, it's, all of this sits outside the planning process. All, we, all we've got is the application, they've served notice on the land ownership, the applicants is the applicant that intends to build this and then occupy it, it's not speculative. They are the one that are applying for it in terms of looking to do it. Um, and as I said, the, um, as I understand, the council own it and there's, there's an agreement outside of planning for these people to use this land. At, at some cost or at no, or you don't know? It's beyond I'm, I'm afraid I don't know. It's, it's been discussed with the council's regeneration team, not the planning team on, on the land ownership side of things. So my take on that is that's a speculative de development because I could have, somebody could apply to build in my back garden, but that doesn't mean I'm ever going to let them do it. So this is being built in the people of Tilbury's back garden since they're the ones that typically use that area, I guess. So I, I'm, I'm just a bit confused that I'd have liked to have thought before this went much further, there was a, a bit better idea around who owns it, are they buying it, is it being gifted, is it, how, what's the arrangement going to look like? And I appreciate some of that is not within your remit, but I think I agree with Councillor Watson, it all looks a bit, a bit kind of flimsy at the moment in terms of what's the model? for developing okay. it. Okay, thank and, you, and Steve. Uh, Tra Tr sorry, uh, Tracy is head of service. Did you want to come in and, and address any of those points? And I'll bring you back in, Chris, thank you. Thank you, Chair. I'd just like to remind members that planning sits with the land, not with the ownership. So effectively, it's we have to determine the application, whether it's acceptable in, in terms of the use on the land and the development, not who owns it, that isn't for the planning process. So you're asking questions that are outside of the planning process um, that are not relevant to this process that we're conducting this evening. Thanks, okay, I, thank you. I think I understand Please. what you're saying, but um, in that case, if we break everything down to the smallest component parts, we'd probably never make any progress. So, but thank you anyway. Thank you, Chair. Um, so that may be right. So, Trace, that may be right, but I disagree with that because I think it is important because it is a planning application that will be on a piece of land for the next 99 years plus. And if that piece of land was in trust or is owned by somebody else that the council is not aware of or is aware and build on it, then I just feel that that has to be absolutely like flushed out first and there is bits of land in this borough yeah. that have been fought over by councillors where they were going to build when there has been covenants on that piece of land that the council hasn't had on so I think it is really important that we look at that this isn't just green belt these are like proper play areas mm -hmm. where people have go and go and rec do recreation already <clears throat> Again, I can only say it's outside of the planning process because um, w if, if, if it can't legally be built, it can still be entitled to planning consent. Um, and because the consent runs with the land and not with the person. So effectively, if that consent was granted, if they couldn't legitimately do it in law, they wouldn't be able to do it. Granting planning permission doesn't legally give somebody an opportunity to do something. It means that the principle in planning is acceptable, but they still have to be legally able to do that in law, and that's a separate matter. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, I'll go to Councillor Polly. Thank you. Um, thank you very much. Um, talking about the anchor fields, the, the anchor fields park, although the red line for this is sort of in the right hand corner, we, we already have the, the mugger on there, don't we? And we also have the children's centre on there. And we had a previous um, sports centre on there at one stage that it become so 
I think the principle of building on that piece of land has already been established by the if if the fields in trust issue were, were was relevant would it not have been raised when we built the children's centre there when we built the previous mugger there when we when we built the the previous sports centre and the and the housing that's on there so that i i, I would think that possibly, you, and I do agree with um, Head of Services comment that land ownership is not the, at one point, the, the planning committee didn't know who owned land because there was a possibility that it could bias, um, conscious or unconscious bias towards the application. So I, I do think that's relevant, but my, my, my consideration is that, that there's history of building on these anchor fields and, and the fields in trust issue, to best of my knowledge, has not been raised before, or if it has been raised. It, it, um, so I, I don't know if that gives members any other comments, but it's not as if this is a virgin piece of land and we've never built on it as we did with the iron fields. And I absolutely agree with Councillor Watson. I mean, West Thurrock, Memorial Park, I mean, it is a classic example. That is the cenotaph for the people of West Thurrock, South Stifford and Perfleet on Thames because that, that whole park was raised from funds post First World War for the future people of, of, of the borough. And absolutely, I agree that, you know, the, these, these covenants do get forgotten about and um, it, it's good to be mindful, but if, if it's a concern, that, that would be my, my argument at the moment, that this, this isn't an, a, a piece of land that has it. I, I did personally question um, why what, was it the applicant's request that it was cited there? Because, I mean, it, the, the, there's two triangles of land, the other side of the road that it, it would... I, I know... Um, for the coronation, there was a fantastic fair uh, and carnival that happened in Tilbury with the T100 and Connecticut, and, and we all emerged onto that field and and the open space of it. I I, I do have a concern that, um, about the sighting of it, but that that again is not a decision. That that that's a decision that's been made arrived at through through the applicant and, and the people that are uh, um, donating the land, which is the authority. I mean, we do have, we have other examples with Impulse Leisure where we, they, they run our facilities for them. They, um, as, as indeed we had the previous planning committee. But, but we still, although they operate it in trust, the land still remains ours. So I think there are other examples. I don't think this is unique. I don't think this is the first time that this has, has um, been put forward. Um, we, at, at council last night, we, we had an issue over parking. And, if, um, and what, one of the things that I have a concern about this is the, the operational hours of this. Do you, I, I couldn't see in the report. I could see that classes start at a certain time in the afternoon. I wasn't clear on what time those... I, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking we're going to have a load of youth at 10 o'clock at night finishing at this youth centre in, in a very... That residential area there, they're more traditional families, they're well-established, they're perhaps a little bit more senior. I mean, I, have we got something in place to marshal, a, a bit like pub kicking out times to compare it with something else, the noise and, you, you know, if people have had a good time, they're leaving, they're standing around chatting, um, it, it's the perception of, of the youth and what's happening. It, it, I'd, I'd be interested to know what, what sort of plans we've got to do with that. And, and staff arriving, those, are, is, will it just be a youth centre? Is, is, there a, is there any aspirations to deliver 
other services that might sit alongside the children's centre there. Um, I just, I don't know if you've got any answers for me. Thank you. Yeah, so of course, the um, hours of operation, um, the planning condition would, and based on what's in the application forms, they're looking at hours between 8 a.m. and 10 p.m., although the when the youth youth people are going to be there, the, the children, and um, you know, from ages 8 to 19, it will be after school, after college times. They've identified that from 4 o'clock onwards is when the building will be used by by the youth youth people uh youth children and things like that at, th at that time of day up until 10 o'clock um in terms of when it finishes if it finishes at 10 so i mean it's the responsibility of the, the youth center to ensure that we can't it goes beyond planning to control anything beyond beyond um, 10 o'clock in terms of the application it is just for a youth center we did ask the question during the application of whether it would be used for alternative use and whether there's any opportunity to do that as a community facility but the applicant's business as a charity um, and how they run their youth centres across the country and other, in other parts of the country do not have that, they, they don't share their use, it's only for that youth facility is what they're looking to do. So that, that, that's, all, that's all what's applying for and that's, all that, that's how their business operates. On a previous application for a school that had one of uh, multiple use games areas, rather than, because I'm never sure whether it's a mugger or a mooga. Um, part of Sports England's requirement was a community use agreement so that residents in the area could, act, you know, if there are any conflicts over the usage of it, floodlights being left on, uh, I'm using an example, uh, in my own walls at the moment, those types of things, that, that residents have got a mechanism to engage with, with the facility or, or something like that. I mean, we, uh, I noticed there's a kickabout pitch, there's something, uh, and, and other facilities that this, this charity is proposing I, I don't know, perhaps if we could speak to the applicant and see if they would be willing to enter into a similar sort of an agreement so that when, if, if there are frustrations, if there are teething problems uh, around drop-off, because um, I understand that parents are not actually allowed in, in the centre, they're only allowed to drop children off. And I, I think as a parent, I'd it's obviously a module I've not been and visited and perhaps I need to do that in all fairness. But if you're dropping off eight-year-olds, I think as a parent, you'd like to know what's going on um, there. But I, I just wondered if, there, if we could perhaps talk to the applicant and see if there is any mechanism that they've used in other areas or would be willing to... Because I think Tilbury's got a very strong sense of community. They've got good forums. They've got... Um, a lot of uh, community groups there that if if we if we look at this so that there could be a mechanism that the residents can engage with with potentially if the if the service was to carry ahead um issues we 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 had we had a motion last night at planning at, at full council about parking around schools and I, and I just have a little bit of a nervousness that if this is the success that we would anticipate and want it to be that there, there could be issues with parking and that so that, that's just a question do you think that's possible for, to speak to applicants on that in terms of the application and, and before this application come to this planning committee we asked the very question of the applicants, whether they would went into into a community use agreement, exactly like how you've mentioned in terms of Sport England, it's something I'm familiar with in terms of other sites in the past. But the applicant have said it's not in their business how their business model operates to do that. Um, so we are where we are with a recommendation that does not have a community use agreement because they didn't want to uh, uh, agree one or, or get involved with one. Um, that's more to do with the use of the building rather than the parking side of things in terms of if the building's 
uh, my thoughts were, if in the buildings not being used in a day and there's communities needs and things like that, then they could use it. They have said in their documentation that if there are mother and parent groups and things like that, they could use the facilities within the day. But again, that's agreement with them outside of the planning application process. Um, and I guess in terms of community use, ag use agreement, even if there wasn't one as a condition, in the future there could be one, again, sitting outside the planning process if it's something that could be used for the building. But again, it's the decision of the people that will occupy this building and their business to do so. So it goes beyond their control to do that. Thank you, Chris. Um, yeah, just picking up on that. I mean, Julian, do you have any comments in, in terms of uh, the parking? Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, actually, we, we, we uh, a, a number of us had the uh, opportunity to actually go to the site. It's actually in Beckon Tree, uh, which is on the fr fringes of Dagenham. And it is practically the same as this site will be. It's got very limited parking. It's got a pick-up and drop-off zone. And... Uh, uh, they they run the same pr principle, uh, the, the fact that the, the 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 children are dropped off, and then they go in. Then they go in. That the parents are not allowed in the building. That's absolutely right. Um, we have had some concerns about the parking issue because obviously um, Tilbury is a slightly a bit different from Beckentree, um, but. So just to give you an idea that the, the site in Beckon Tree, some of the children were coming from at least half of, half an hour, half an hour's bus ride and whatever it is away. So it is a popular site, the one in Beckon Tree. Uh, the, the people themselves promote sustainable transport. So they encourage all their staff uh, to to go by public transport. Most of the 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 the, the, the sites that we've we visited that site and we were shown a number of other sites and how they operate. Uh, most of the other sites, uh, again, the, the, a lot of the staff go by public transport. The site we went to in Beckentree, I don't think there was anybody parked. They have got a little car park. They've got one internally, it's enclosed rather. And then they've got a, a, a little area that's got grass creek on it. Well, when we, when we went there, the most people who actually park on that grass creek area are people who walk their dogs in the park. There are hardly anybody who actually parks in, in, the, in, in the car park in terms of their staff. And as I said, they encourage staff to, to use public and transport. So there, there is a small section of parking. Uh, there is a pick up and drop off zone, but obviously we felt Tilbury did differ a bit from Beckentry, as I said. So we've, we, we've suggested that that a sum of money is is provided, potentially to start with to put some double yellow lines in, particularly around the ra the, the roundabout and the junction. But we are aware previously that um, residents along London Road have raised issues about parking. So what we've said is, once the 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 youth zone is in operation, we would look at the parking levels, and potentially there would be money available to implement other parking measures that would be for uh, for the for the resident to for the residents use so potentially something like a a small residence parking zone or something so that 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 would be for residents to park only and and obviously uh people to park elsewhere but we have a look at some of the roads along the side uh, i mean the parking survey was done and in the main most of the roads other than the ones that along that bit of London Road, uh, the, the other ones around the park are very lightly parked altogether. So if there was a little bit of parking, it wouldn't necessarily be a significant issue. What would concern us would be if it, if it displaced residents parking and if they were parked in unsafe places, you know. So the, the, we suggested this sum of 10,000 pounds to potentially deal with that if that was a problem once the centre was in place. Okay, thank you. Um, so I'll go to Councillor Piccolo, then Councillor Arnold, then Councillor Shinnick. Thank you. So Councillor Piccolo first. Thank you. That's all right. I, I think we've lost myself. I don't know if we've got in a debate or we're, whether we're still on questions. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, because it seems that we've been having a debate rather than questions. Um, 
can I just can you just clarify to me that just because we can't plan the permission, if there's restrictions on the land, it's up to the applicant to overcome those restrictions. So we can grant planning permission, but if there's restrictions that are, restrictions that are governed by other outside bodies, they would need to overcome those restrictions before they could go ahead. Because if that's the case, then I think we seem to be discussing something that we don't actually need to discuss, because it's not up to us to decide whether the other restrictions can be enforced. It's up to the people that have placed those restrictions to enforce them. Uh, in short, uh, the, the answer, I think, is the answer to the question is yes. There are, uh, in terms of, um, we can grant planning permission. If someone wants to build on that land, they'll need the permission of the landowner to do it. And that's that's the council, but um, it's outside of planning, if you see what I mean, that, um, you know, would wouldn't need to give that consent to allow them to build on the land. Sorry, I just, I don't think it's right. <coughs> Other people have mentioned there might be covenants on the land. Yeah. I'm not up on so, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm saying if there's covenants on the land, those covenants don't fall with under the planning committee's remit, do they? They would have to meet any covenant. Any, if you want to develop on the land, you would have to overcome any covenants that are placed on the land by an outside body. Yes, in short to that. Okay. Okay, thank you. Um, right, go to Councillor Arnold next. Thank you, Chair, and thank you, Chris. Um, yeah, just just quickly going back to comments Tracy was making. Uh, you un you made us sort of you reminded us how the actual planning process actually works. Um, and obviously, just listening to Councillor Piccolo, it's kind of highlighted that again. And I do actually go. My mind was going back to an application from many months ago, which I was particularly perplexed about because we, we sat and determined on an application and um, and it became apparent that the, you would have to cross someone else's land to actually get to that site. But we still went through that process of of the application on that on, at that committee, which was all a bit odd, but I do understand the reasoning behind that. Um, obviously, I've read through, there's quite a long list of uh, letters of objection, isn't there? Um, and, and my first real question, because other other things have been answered far more eloquently than what I could. Um, have the local neighbourhood at all, has there been some sort of consultation process? I mean, it's, a, it's quite a heavily, it's a high density area, isn't it? And obviously a lot of people are going to have fears about being, um, you know, noise, disturbance, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Has there been some kind of large scale consultation carried out to actually get a feel of what the residents do actually think about this? I can talk about the, um, the planning consultation process. Like with all planning applications, we've had to consult everyone that's within the, or adjacent to the red line area. Um, so they've been subject to consultation through neighbour letters. There's been site notices put up and there was a press advert as well. I need to check as into what the applicant did before the planning application came in. So just bear with me on that. Uh, I can just I can advise as we see of a lot of planning applications there is a statement of community involvement which showed what work they did before they submitted their planning application uh, and this included briefing packs sent to, to members consultation leaflets sent out consultation leaflets delivered to 2700 addresses in the area there were face-to-face -face events held in January and February of this year um, and in addition to an in-person consultation event as well again back in January and February February two, two events for then so there has been, um, by looks of it, quite an extensive consultation process undertaken uh, within the local neighbourhood, um, which the applicant has done before they've submitted the planning application, which is something that's encouraged as, to, as part of good practice. So they have done that. Okay, well, that's very interesting. I mean, it's, it's actually quite a far-reaching consultation, isn't it, really? Um, to, again, to, just coming back to a comment earlier on, you said that this, the Tilby site differs from the, the Beacon Tree site. Can you just tell me... How and why you think it differs? Uh, but basi basically, um, 
it, it, it is very much the same in, in its locale. It's, it, sits, it sits in a residential area, though there is a, um, a, um, a medical centre actually opposite, right opposite it, but it is, in, it, it is within a residential area. The main differences uh, are, uh, obviously, you're in an outer London borough. Uh, it, 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 it's more built up around that, but the, the park that it in is significantly bigger than the park that, that the site's going on. Uh, and uh, obviously, it, you, there are m more public transport opportunities around than than potentially Tilbury. I mean, you've got the buses do do go into Tilbury, but this specific site, the buses actually go past it in both directions. But it, it's not dissimilar. It's just that it is probably got slightly better public transport being in London than Tilbury would have. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you for that question, Councillor Arnold, and over to Councillor Shinnick. Thank you, Chair. Um, I've just got one question. Um, you know, you s well, about, talked about going around looking at the parking. I just wondered what time of day you done that, please. Okay, they, they would have done what, what's called a, a Lambeth method uh, set of parking, which is to go around particularly during the evening when the parking is obviously worse, in, particularly in residential areas. But in a lot of instances, we would also ask them to go around during the day. But in the main, we would look for them to go around at the times of operation of the facility. So that's when the, the surveys would have been done. So you look at most, the, the Moth methodology, they call it the Lambeth method, obviously, because it was started in Lambeth when the, the, we started with residence parking and that, that type of thing. So th they go round on like a Saturday, potentially, or a Thursday night or a Wednesday night, whatever, whatever the neutral, whatever would be considered a neutral day in that particular area. So it would be potentially unique to where, whichever area it's going to take part in, because obviously certain areas traditionally, uh, you know, for instance, when I worked in Seven Oaks, it was my market day on a Wednesday, so we always did market day surveys because that would have been the worst parking area. So they would have looked to have done their surveys when the parking was at its worst. Okay. Um, all right then. So I think that's uh, questions for for the time uh, for the moment. Um, so with that, we'll now move on to the speaker statements. Um, we have um, uh, accepted a, a late statement from the, the ward councillor, Councillor Allen, uh, down to confusion of submission times. So obviously, we can allow on, on, on a one-off for that to, to, to go ahead. So, uh, Councillor uh, Allen, if you'd be so kind, if, you've got, if you'd like to come down, and you've got uh, three minutes in which to uh, present your case. And that's a statement of objection. Thank you. Thank you, Chair, and good evening, Chamber. My name's Councillor John Allen. I'm the independent elected member for Tilbury Riverside and Farrock Park Ward, to which the proposed youth zone is set to be implemented. I would like to make clear for the record that I am not opposed for the implementation of such a facility. However, I am strongly opposed to the chosen location of what's left of the anchor field and I'm sure I speak on behalf of many residents who feel the same over the loss of yet more of our loved field. The anchor field, along with King George Plainfield, otherwise known as the Daisy Field in Tilbury, are both under the protection of fields in trust, uh, which can be clearly seen on their green space index online, those two locations, the Daisy Field and the anchor field, under so-called protection. However, in the past, we've seen, under the wisdom of Forrett Council, uh, proposed developments like it. I hold the Tilbury Development Framework paper published in October of 2017 when they proposed to build houses on the Daisy Field. 
to which I produced a petition and stopped. So it certainly seems that Furrock Borough Council are intent on taking away all of our green open and recreational spaces in Tilbury, which I find alarming. And so do most of the residents in Tilbury. Now, in, in terms of the consultation, I believe that was flawed. Uh, the, the dates that were given, although this, again, this council would like to paint Tilbury as an area of deprivation and high unemployment, but I can tell you it's a working class area. And when the consultation took place, most of the people, residents, were working. Uh, also, dates and times were given, and the times wasn't even adhered to. Okay, uh, uh, and they had to close before the, the desired time. So it was definitely flawed, the consultation. Uh, uh, it's clear that, that the Yanker field is a blank canvas, and that's why it's, it's a, a, a preference, a preference location uh, due to the overall spend being the cheaper option, I believe, uh, with no demolition cost. Or, or, or anything occurring. It's, it's a blank space that you can dig up straight away. Okay. Uh, in terms of, uh, of the trouble that this uh, facility may cause, uh, I mean, we've got very low police presence in Tilbury, so how would it be policed? Uh, also, uh, sorry. Uh, there's, there's also concerns of, of the parking spaces. There's, there's also grave concern from residents uh, like surrounding the policing of that area. Uh, okay, thank you, Councillor. You're right to just sum up for us. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I'd, I'd, I'd just say, uh, please, please stop trying to take away our open and green spaces in Tilbury. Uh, once they're lost, they'll be lost forever. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Councillor Allen. And uh, with that, we'll also invite a, another statement of objection, and that's from a, a local resident. That's uh, Craig Austin, if you'd like to come down. And um, Mr. Austin, uh, you have uh, three minutes to present your case. Thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you for the, oppor the opportunity to, to speak to you this evening. Um, uh, this application will take away a uh, protected green space for, from the whole community to provide resources to a very limited demographic with facilities only accessible to the 8 to 18 year old age bracket on a free of charge 99 year lease to a single entity for exclusive use. The OAPs, elderly couples, grandparents and grandchildren who enjoy this community asset will be prevented from doing so. The Ankerfield continues to be a vital resource to our growing community and has recently been the venue for local community days and religious gatherings that wouldn't have been possible without this space. And no community in Furrock is in need of further resident integration than Tilbury. <coughs> the application hasn't provided adequate parking facilities for the proposed amount of staff with only four spaces illustrated and Onside's own data showing there will be 15 full-time and 45 part-time members of staff with no indication of how many could be on site at any one time, with comparisons to the Dagenham facility inaccurate due to the size of Parslow's Park. Residents of London Road have actually attended this facility. Um, given the location of the anchor field in the town, the application surprisingly relies heavily on strong public transport links that don't exist. The three bus stops that are within walking distance serve relatively limited routes and the timetable, sorry, sorry, limited routes and timetables and the train station, depending on your route out of the building, a 20 minute walk away. This application in no way benefits from good public transport links, a point also noted in the consultee comments by highways. Limited parking facilities will encourage parking on adjacent roads that are already a serious safety concern with surrounding roads becoming drop-off points providing hazards to other road users and the preschool children soon and soon-to-be parents currently using the Shore Start Centre. With parking taking place on both the north and south side of London Road, visibility in and around the road and connected junctions is already limited. 
Again, a concern already raised by highways. It was only last night at the full council meeting where a motion was submitted aimed at tackling nuisance parking at the borough's schools, with the cabinet member for highways imploring this committee to robustly refuse any application that doesn't provide adequate drop-off provisions such as this. Full consideration hasn't been allowed to residents in close proximity to the proposal in respect of noise and antisocial behaviour that will become that will come with a building of this nature. Uh, at a recent community meeting, local police officers actually uh, explained the challenges they face with the lack of resources, and this will undoubtedly add to their workload. I would also contest the public consultation on the proposal, uh, as it did not provide adequate opportunities for the wider community to view and comment with many residents unaware of dates and times. There were insufficient windows for people who are in full-time employment to visit and ask relevant questions, ultimately limiting that sample size. This is clearly evidenced in the data published by Onside. Further efforts to understand the impact of this facility in a town as unique as Tilbury are not addressed, with the study submitted only a few weeks ago titled Defining the Impact of a Youth Zone, dated May 2015. We live in a very different social climate than we did eight and a half years ago. Thank you. Are you right to sum up there for us, Mr. Austin? Yeah. Thank you. Uh, a, any project, um, sorry, further, but just to sum it up, the, the project is financially dependent on the Tilbury Town's fund money and collaboration with currently unidentified businesses. There are several questions. Any project that benefits from public money, such as a town fund, should also come with a detailed financial projection. To date, no detailed financial forecasts have been available, uh, made available on running costs, long term funding. Lots of nice words, but no numbers. I'm summing up this bit part now. Um, in addition to the level of objections, extremely negative community feedback and valid concerns, this committee needs to be satisfied with the lack of the financial data that's been provided that this project is not going to become another long-term drain on our already fragile council, uh, fragile council finances. Tilbury residents want this facility, but not in exchange for a green space. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you, and that takes us to our last statement, and that's a statement of uh, support, and that's an uh, Adam Ponya, and that's, uh, I understand you're representing Onside Youth Zones. Thank you. Thank you, Adam. I'll, I'll allow you the same time as, as the last speakers, just, just under, just, well, you'll have just over four, three minutes there. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Good evening, Chair and members of the committee. Um, working in partnership with Thurrock Council and Tilbury Town Deal Board, uh, Onside are very pleased to propose our application for the new Thurrock Youth Zone. It'll be one of 15 youth zones in Onside's national network of facilities that's specifically designed for young people. Officers uh, have provided a fantastic supporting statement of the technical details for our application, so I don't propose to go through those but I would like to address some of the issues I've been made aware of as part of the consultation process. Hey, can you speak up for us, please, Adam? Sorry, can you just get, get closer to the mic, please? Thank you. There are understandable concerns around antisocial behaviour and crime, but our experience shows this is ill-founded. Far from serving as a magnet for antisocial behaviour and crime, existing use zones have actually contributed to significantly decreasing such issues, and the police report to us the positive effects of partnership working resulting in decreases of this type of activity by up to 77% in some areas. We provide young people with something positive to focus their attentions on. In regard to building on open space, we have undertaken various assessments as to the viability of the project in terms of location, accessibility and prominence and working with sites that have, been, that have been made available to us. We are increasing site biodiversity by increasing planting and landscaping schemes and we have worked with Thurrock officers to incorporate our scheme within a new parks master plan to be delivered by the council. The project will deliver a high quality environment and be a strong community asset. In regard to noise, use zones are designed in recognition of the results from acoustic analysis based on our the use of outdoor kick pitch and play areas. These are within acceptable noise levels and guidelines. Also, the staff team work closely with the young people and are mindful of residents, particularly when uh, leaving the youth zone after a session ends. Youth zones strive to be good neighbours. Being a positive member of the community is something we're passionate about and it's in our DNA. We do have examples where residents have been opposed to a new 
opposed to a new youth zone during its early development stages, but very quickly they become strong advocates. They become volunteers as they see the benefits of the youth zone and what it offers to the community and its young people. There are huge social impact benefits of this project, providing game-changing benefits for local young people, Tilbury and the surrounding areas, local businesses and other like-minded partners. Thurrock Youth Zone will give young people a safe place to go, have fun and grow. It will help young people lead healthier, happier lives, enable them to face life's challenges. It will help young people to raise their aspirations and go on and achieve in education and employment and ultimately it will help to strengthen communities by supporting young people to be empowered, active and caring citizens. This is an opportunity to approve a fantastic 21st century facility uh, which will, will help many generations of young people and will be an asset to the town, something everyone quite rightly will be proud of. Thank you. <coughs> Okay, thank you very much for that statement. Are you right to just turn off the mic there for us, please? Sorry. Cheers. Sorry, thank you. Excellent. Okay, then. Um, right, so based on those statements, do we have any further questions? Okay, no. Uh, uh, I'll go to Councillor Maney. Thank you. There's not been much mention of tree loss. I know it's in the report here, but what, what are some of the age of these trees? And do they need to come down, really? Thank you. Um, the application is accompanied by an arboricultural assessment that looked at the trees on the site, uh, and that is a, there's a um, standardisation in terms of how they categorise trees in terms of their value and amenity value. Um, as mentioned, I think earlier, the, um, there would be some of the trees that are already in, in place be removed as part of the, um, uh, the information. I don't know how old those trees are, but I can tell you they're not trees subject to tree preservation orders or anything like that. Um, and the proposed landscaping scheme does look to provide replacement and more trees than there are at present. Obviously, there's a bit of time for them to grow, but that is, um, would, would happen in time. So there is a revised landscaping plan proposed, and that would be secured for a planning condition. Thank you, Chair. Um, there is suggestion that there is a, almost a 100-year-old tree coming down. Is that, is that? Correct? Am I correct in, in that? A hundred year old tree to be removed, which, which naturally bothers me greatly. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thanks for those comments. The tree report, I'll just look at the tree report, it does identify that some of the trees are, are more than 20 years old, but I'll, I'll refer you to the consultation response for the Council's Landscape and Ecology Advisor, who doesn't raise an objection, he just requires the uh, landscaping scheme to be agreed for a planning condition. So there are no grounds in terms of um, issues of, of objection in terms of the loss of any trees. Um, the, the, the bit of the report that deals with the trees is um, paragraph 6.47 on page 102, just in case you needed to see what that said. Um, it doesn't say about the age of the trees in that part, but the arboricultural report does say the trees are more than 20 years old. Um, but as I say, there's a, um, a landscaping scheme to replace any trees that would be removed. Okay, thank you. And uh, there was a comment there on the consultation about the process, the times of day. I suppose really whether it was in Tilbury, Stamford, is, I imagine that's just your usual consultation times you run? Is it just an average consultation? Thank you. I'm not sure if this statement of um, community involvement actually says exactly what time of days the, these were done, but as I said before, there are 
the leaflets that were sent out as well as face-to-face -face consultations and things like that and uh, online consultations. So there are various means that were obviously put out there to do the consultation that before the planning application came in. We then as a planning authority run as required by planning law our own planning consultation process as well on top of that as part of this process in terms of this application. Okay, thank you. So um, with that, if there are no further questions, um, we'll head to the debate phase and then once we've, we've had our discussion, we'll head to some form of conclusion. Um, who would like to start this evening and express uh, where we should be going with this particular application? Uh, would anyone like to start? Uh, Steve Taylor. Thanks, Chair. Well, I guess my, I, I agree with some of the comments certainly that uh, the speakers have, have made, which I think it's, it looks like a great opportunity. My question over, or my, my fear is over the, the location of it, um, as has been mentioned before. But, but probably what, given the sort of debate we had earlier, and I know I, I don't, I don't want to go back to that, but effectively, where we stand at the moment is we stand a risk of agreeing to development in principle on the site. And if this doesn't go forward, what else could be built at some stage in the future? So that, that's my big concern, given that we can't get an, you know, much, much of an answer about the land. I appreciate that's outside of this process, but effectively, if you're giving development in principle on that site, who knows what ends up there? That, that's my concern. Thanks, Chair. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Taylor. I mean, strictly speaking, nothing will be built there without the approval of this committee. And, and that's obviously what we're here to do. We make these decisions. So I'm not going to, you know, if someone wants to build a youth zone on green space, run away and then come back and build residential flats, it's simply not going to happen. But either way, it does have to come through this committee. But um, I'll, I'll take what you're, what you're saying on board. Principle, it would have to come back as another youth zone, one would assume. But again, it won't go through without. Um, without uh, Democratic councillors uh, giving out the green light. Um, Councillor Arnold. Thank you, Chair. Um, you know, I'm genuinely, uh, genuinely sitting here really torn right down the middle. Um, I've listened to some really good discussion, actually, even from, you know, from members on the committee and obviously from the, uh, the public gallery there. Um, I do have some reservations about the parking. And obviously, Councillor Polly sort of outlined that quite well. Um, the land ownership thing is obviously a major issue, but we are here to consider the application where that where that goes after this point. I really do not know. Um, the triangular piece of land that obviously is on the other side of Hume Avenue, I believe it is, isn't it? Um, I've kind of, I mean, I've written a question mark on my site plan here because I'm thinking that is really then becomes quite isolated, doesn't it? And who knows what will happen with that. Um, well, the, oh, and the relocation of the Mugo, you know, th there was obviously an unanswered question there. It's really, I think, coming to committee, we should have been informed as to what the um, alternatives arrangements were that for that were going to be. It's quite a disappointment, I think. Um, on the other side, um, I've spoken to quite a few people about, about the, the facility in other areas, um, and I do know that it is exceptional what they do there. Um, I've, I've heard many a story about huge, successful youth um, really setting out on, the, on a really good road to really strong adulthood. Um, the facilities in our other locations are top-notch. Um, and I know, obviously, this area, as is every area, I mean, it, it, it needs facilities for, for youth to go to and to get a really good head start in life. I mean, everybody says that, don't they? Everybody. And there's... And now we have an application, an application in front of us to create something like this. Where it goes, I do not know. But it is a real gem, and it could potentially come to Tilbury. And I think if it's open and running for long enough, I think that even the doubters m would be turned and would be swayed because they would see the benefit that's in their local neighbourhood. 
I, I am generally, generally really quite split on this one. But I can absolutely see both sides of the argument. Thank you. OK, thank you. Um, who would like to go next? Um, uh, I'll go Councillor Shinnick, then Councillor Watson. Yeah. yeah um, I do know this area quite well. And I just feel that regarding the parking, that there'd be more pressure on people of Tilbury in that area because they end up having parking permits and which will implement more costs to the residents, you know. And I do think that they ought to think more on parking spaces. You know, that's my main concern on this issue. Thank you. OK, thank you. Uh, Councillor Watson. Thank you, Chair. So, I am torn. I, I will admit that I am torn. The youth zone, I need to get clear, is that I know exactly where that other one is. It's in Parslow's Park, mm. which is an absolute massive park. And it is in the location at Porter's Avenue on the corner of Ivy House, which takes up that small area that you don't really see it. Yeah. It's quite isolated, it's got parking on it, you don't see it. We're considering the same building on a, it's not even a field anymore, it's like a, a, a large amenity green that people go there to. So you, it, it's stuck right in the middle. The services that the youth zone do is second to none. And there's no getting away from that, they're phenomenal. They've sought out like drug related things, they've sorted out gang relation thing and they're there for all ages and it's an absolute brilliant provision. Um, I still am asking, as the IMC is not going to go ahead, is there an opportunity that it could be scaled down and moved? I think Tilbury deserves something but I'm not sure it deserves a detrimental of taking away another green space that it sits with. And also, the parking will become an issue. The drop-off points I worry about will become parking points. You know, and there's not enough parking inside the youth zone. And I think the residents around that will get snarled up in traffic. So, um, I'm, I'm like with Councillor Arnold, I am really, really torn on this. Um, yeah, I think that's... I know, I think I know which way I'm going to go, but thank you. OK, thank you. Uh, Councillor Polly. Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, I, th I think there's a common theme amongst the whole of the committee. That, um, the sighting of it is, is not perfect. It's not necessarily the, the ideal, but we are where we are. And... The, the actual the actual planning application is what we've got to focus on and and the delivery of the services i mean the it's called the flagship center and i would hope there's something in that title that would give us some confidence that the the services that the provision are coming from this center Will, will be of a great service to the people of, of firstly Tilbury and and eventually Thurrocky. Um, the it's it's always difficult, isn't it? it when we, we was it was mentioned by Mr. Taylor if we don't. If we, in principle, say yes to this, and then it doesn't come to fruition, it's the same with the integrated medical centre. Everybody wants provisions, wants services, but we've got to build them somewhere. And if if this is the land that is available, and this will be the delivery vehicle for these services, then um, I think I think that that's something that. It's not for this committee to determine. It is more the actual application in front of us, and and I do understand that why that there are some real concerns. So thank you for that, Chair. 
Okay, thank you. Um, were there any further comments? Uh, the, uh, Councillor Piccolo, then Councillor Miney. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Just a, a couple of things. I mean, I, I am torn to a certain extent, but perhaps not quite as much as others. Um, with the parking situation, it, it, they're talking about a, it's a drop-off and pick-up. In other words, I don't know how long the sessions last for, but if they last for an hour or two hours, I can't see someone wanting to park in the local road and sit in their car for two hours because it's only going to be the youths that are using the centre that are going to be allowed in there. Um, so that's one point on that. Um, it, it also, from, from what I've seen from the uh, comments made about the other centres, they do seem to be um, a socially responsible company that are, are, are manning this um, or proposing this. And if it brings about those improvements for... And I know at the moment the local community obviously are concerned because they're losing a bit of space, but they could well be gain, gaining um, a lot of um, activities for the for the local local youths. Um, Tilbury's not an easy place necessarily to get to, and I'm hoping that the majority of the people that use the centre would actually be local youths. So the local community in the long run hopefully will benefit from it. Um, I understand that, uh, um, you know, at, at first sight I can understand their concerns. Um, but I, I think I can see the benefits down the line. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And uh, Councillor Maney. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'm not really torn at all. Um, to be honest, um, maybe 90-10. The loss of the green space, it, it feels to me that in Thurrock, um, all we're seeking to do is take away green spaces um, over and over again. The loss of the trees, I mean, yes, they're category B and C, but we should still seek to retain them, maybe. Um, I don't want to be overly negative about the application because I do think it's a good application. Do I think it's the right place for it? No, I, I don't think I do. I can see, envisage antisocial behaviour. And I know you, you know, we can't be responsible for human behaviour. You won't ever stop that. But I just can see this coming with a lot of problems for the residents. Um, and for that reason, I've probably not going to vote with it. Okay, thank you. And there was uh, one final hand raise there again by Councillor Arnold. Uh, Councillor Arnold, if you'd like to go ahead. Thank you, Chair. Couldn't, couldn't resist coming back in, really. Um, I mean, even just listening to this last little bit of debate, again, still very interesting. Um, just picking up on a little comment just to my left here just now, um, antisocial behaviour. But I think a facility like this, it actually it will operate to actually stop antisocial behaviour. And I believe this is an extremely difficult decision for me. Um, but, I, you know, you have to stick your head up. This is a very high-density area. And I think if I was a parent anywhere near this, I would be glad that there is a facility like this that my child could walk to and to sit in and take part on any number of sessions that would help them become a more rounded, better individual. And, 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 I, and I do think maybe it needs a few years to get to that point, but I think Tilbury will benefit from this. I, I will vote for it, but it is a very difficult decision. OK, thank you. OK, I think that's everybody. Um, well, thanks, thanks for those contributions there. Thanks uh, for, to the officers for, for bringing this one forward. Um, obviously, some really good arguments on all sides there, really good speaker statements, um, both uh, in, in favour and against. Obviously, what we are looking at here is going to be an absolutely fantastic youth zone, but obviously we do have to accept that there is going to be a loss of open space there. Um, I do think that we, we have to also accept that you know, it is going to attract cars to the area. Um, obviously, I, d I do think it's going to be a benefit to the, to the, to the use of uh, both Tilbury and Thurrock. It, it has to be a net benefit based on the, the facilities that are available. Um, I get it, it's a tough one, but um, and, I, and I think the vote will be close. But uh, for me, I think uh, if, if we don't uh, give this one the green light now, it, it could go down the road and, and who knows what, what's, 
what, what, what the future looks like. I do think, obviously, this youth zone of the company or the charity are obviously got a track record of, uh, of delivery and uh, looking at uh, some of the reviews online of, of these facilities, they're obviously you know, really, uh, really well reviewed in, in local areas. So look, tough one, I get it, uh, but that is planning. And uh, we, we might have a couple more of these tonight where we, we will return on them. So with that, um, would anyone like to recommend the uh, officer's recommendation on page 106, uh, which is obviously the recommendation uh, for approval? Um, uh, recommended by Councillor Polly, I'll, um, or Councillor Piccolo, if you'd like to second that. Um, okay, yeah, happy for us to go to the vote, yeah. Fantastic, okay. So, um, the recommendation, uh, recommendation eight is for approval uh, on page 106. Uh, that is recommended by Councillor Polly, uh, seconded by Councillor Piccolo. All those in favour, please raise your hands. Okay, that's, uh, that's four votes in favour. Uh, all those against? Okay then, so that was uh, four votes in favour and, uh, and three votes against. Therefore, the, uh, the application agenda item 11, uh, Youth Centre, Flagship Centre in uh, London Road, Tilbury, has been approved. Okay, thank you very much everyone for your contributions there. And... Um, Enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you. What we'll do now, obviously, we'll go back to the uh, beginning of the uh, agenda, which takes us to uh, Greystead Parkers Farm Road. Um, I'll wait for Mr. Lydiard to come back. Oh, Councillor Allen, respectfully, you've been given some concessions here this evening. Those comments are unwelcome. Thank you. We, we, we did have a resident, respectfully, thank you. Chair, Chair, Re respectfully, I will be um, relating that to the monitoring officer afterwards, thank you. Okay, thank you. Yeah, look, um, this is, uh, you know, a couple, of, uh, a couple of months ago at full council, we, we discussed planning committee membership, the, the, the pressures and stresses we're all under, and, and this is why some people can, 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 can handle it, and, and this is why other people, you know, don't like the planning committee. Nothing wrong with that, but it's... it's Unfortunately, it's, it's not the first time it's happened, it won't be the last. Okay, so with that, um, we will move on to item eight. This is a call-in, uh, Greysteads, Parkers Farm Road, all sit, um, twin, found on pages 23 to 42, uh, 23 stroke 00813 stroke HHA, and uh, Nadia, uh, if you'll be so kind as to present a report, thank you. Good evening, Chair, good evening, members. I'm hoping You'll be able to see. That's fine, as long as it's. It should. I should be sharing it shortly. I've, I've opened my share screen. Oh, okay. Thank you. I'll just give it a moment. Okay, members, and good evening all. So this application is a call-in, as the chair's explained, and it relates to a property called Greystead on Parker's Farm Road in Orsett. Hopefully you can still see what's coming forward. So the application relates to a detached dwelling and outbuilding in the Green Belt in Orsett. I'm, I'm conscious the presentation isn't yet up. Oh. Okay. Lovely, that's now up. Hopefully you can all now see that, uh, both those viewing at home or remotely and everyone in the chamber. So this application relates to detached dwelling and outbuilding in the Greenbelt in Orsett. 
the property has an extensive planning history which includes a substanti substantial extensions and an outbuilding providing a pool and a conservatory as well as a separate garage at the site. The additions and changes to the site have led to the restriction of classes A and E, which is extensions and outbuildings, under permitted development as detailed in the planning history in your report. The proposal seeks to erect a single storey extension to provide a garage to the existing pool outbuilding, which is the building to the top, topmost part of the site, so the northernmost part of the site in front of you there. The history is relevant to this application in that the applicant has sought to gain permission for a very similar development such as, such as that proposed before. A previous planning application for a similar, albeit larger, scheme was refused and dismissed at appeal in 2019. The applicant submitted a follow-up application for a, proposed, for a proposal identical to the one before you this evening. Officers considered that detailed submission, including the council advice that was submitted with the applicant with the application and all the information submitted this evening, and advised the applicant's agent that that application would likely be, rec be recommended for refusal, as it was still considered to conflict with local and national greenbelt policy. The applicant then elected to withdraw that most recent application, and then submitted the same identical proposal before you tonight and lobbied ward councillors to call in the application, as, as they're absolutely entitled to do so. The application details reasons why the applicant requires the proposal, which is for the storage of motor, motor vehicle parts as part of their long-established racing car hobby. Unfortunately, the proposal exceeds the limitations of both policy PMD6 and the MPPF in that the proposal would exceed the floor area allowed and be disproportionate as an addition to the dwelling and, and site, contrary to Greenbelt policy. And there's the floor plan of the proposal. And so in front of you there, you can see the proposed garage on the left attached to the um, swimming pool building and conservatory outbuilding on the northern part of the site. Um, and here are some elevations of the proposal attached to the outbuilding. As you can see, the extension would sit immediately behind the existing detached garage and would be relatively well screened from public view. And there in front of you there, the, the proposed garage would be in the upper, uppermost elevation on the right-hand side there and would match the design of the outbuilding. The planning inspector, in considering the previous appeal for the slightly larger extension, if I just hold that up there, it would be easier for you to see, um, commented that the proposal would have limited visibility, but went on to state that this did not mean that it would have no impact on openness. While this current proposal has been reduced somewhat in its footprint, um, so for example, the previous uh, proposal that was dismissed at appeal was 78 square metres in size. This has been reduced to 60 square metres in size. So while it's been reduced in footprint, it would still be reasonable to conclude the impact on openness would be broadly similar and the development would continue to be an appropriate development in the Greenbelt. Some images of the site, these have been provided by the applicant, which includes some of those um, shared to members this week, so they should look quite familiar. So there's the dwelling on the left-hand side there, and the outbuilding is just to the left of the existing dwelling, and there's the driveway in the bottom image there. So in this, in this slide, you'll see in the left-hand photograph, that's the existing driveway and the location of the proposed extension to the outbuilding and to the right is some images of the uh, applicant's current use of the garage and um, and their, their motor vehicle hobby and the bottom image in the center there shows some of the parts that are stored outside at, at the moment and um, in summary the proposal comprises inappropriate development in the green belt which is considered disproportionate and therefore harmful by de definition and to openness the additional information by the applicant has been fully considered by both the council's legal team and by officers but does not clearly outweigh the harm caused and the application is recommended for refusal on page 39. Okay, thank you. Um, right, uh, that opens it up to questions. Do we have any questions on this one? Um, no, 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 no. questions. Um, 
All right then. Um, <clears throat> let's go to, uh, if, there, if there are no questions, let's move on to um, a statement of support, which is, uh, oh, sorry, Councillor Piccolo. Sorry. Yeah, just, just out of interest. <coughs> whilst this is being, this is asked for a substantive brick built building, if, they def if the applicant decided to put up, I don't know, a 30 foot by six foot high gazebo to work in, would, would, they, would they need uh, planning permission for that? I don't think they would, would they? Chair, if I may, um, the, it comes down to whether that structure you refer to, um, Councillor Piccolo, would be permanent or not, or intended to be permanent and permanently fixed to the ground. If, for example, it was, say, um, you permanently, permanently cemented in at its corners and intended to be a permanent structure, albeit not brick built, it would require planning permission because permitted development rights for classes E, so outbuildings at the site, have been restricted um, for the last, um, sort of well, since 1995, um, uh, given, given the planning history of the site, and they've been tested as appeal as well, and the planning inspector considered classes A and E, so extensions and outbuildings would require additional planning permission. So if it's a permanent, intended to be permanent, any structure like that would require planning permission. If it, if it was a tent or a marquee, and it's used for a temporary period, then perhaps not, but if it's used for storage and intended to be permanent, it would require permission. Thank okay, you. thank you. Uh, Councillor Watson, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Nadia. Can I just ask a quick question? Is the plan application you put in any different from the planning application that was um, plan application that didn't go through previously, okay. that was refused, and what the planning inspector said is they would withheld the appeal? Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, the previous planning application that was withdrawn is identical to the one before you tonight in terms of its size and footprint of the proposal. The one thing that differs is that we have had a follow-up council opinion with this current application, whereby the same council off reiterates that advice given previously and also provides that same advice again. But in terms of the actual proposal, it is identical. In, with respect to the um, application that was considered, which was previously refused and then dismissed as appeal, that proposal was 78 square metres, so 18 square metres larger in footprint, but in terms of its design and appearance was very similar, and the inspector also considered that to be harmful. Sorry, Nadia, on that point, when it when it was withdrawn, was it outside of the calling uh, dates? So it was withdrawn and resubmitted, so it could be called to committee. Is that my understanding? Um, thank you, Chair. Yes, that's, that would be a correct understanding. Um, there have been lengthy discussions and negotiations with the agents regarding this application, the previous application for some time. And when officers um, had fully considered everything and still was advised the agent we were still mindful of recommending it unfavorably on in principle unfortunately um, the advice given to the agent would be they they wouldn't be able to call it in because it was outside those parameters they then elected to withdraw and resubmit an identical application yep okay uh, any further questions no, okay. So we have a, uh, a speaker statement of, we have two, but unfortunately Councillor Johnson can't be with us uh, this evening. Uh, so we do have a, a, a last statement of support and that's from a Mrs. K Frost, who's the applicant. Um, Uh, thank you. You've got three minutes in which to present your case. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, members. My name is Karen Frost, and my partner and I have lived in Orsett for over 30 years, 27 of them at the property in question, which is our forever home. Our application is for a garage extension to provide much-needed space for my partner, whose success successful racing career has generated the requirement. Several race cars are stored at our property and maintenance is a significant part of racing. 
Currently, this is carried out in the existing garage, which is too small for our needs and means that we keep a large amount of spare parts and maintenance equipment outside and open to the elements. If our application is granted, it will improve the visual immunity of our property and allow maintenance to be carried out undercover. The property is of an enclosed nature and the proposed new garage is sited to the rear of the premises behind both internal walling and gates, coupled with a design sympathetic to the existing buildings, meaning that there will be no impact on the openness of the green belt. This is endorsed by Councillor Johnson and your officer's report to committee acknowledges the lack of harm arising from the proposal and the sympathetic de design. We do not believe that the proposal represents a disproportionate increase where it is 39% the size of the pool building and smaller than the previous refused scheme. The committee report does not consider all the material circumstances put forward by our planning advisor which cumulatively, cumulatively amount to very special circumstances as confirmed by our council. Our submission identifies six material circumstances which our advisors have highlighted in a letter to you. The officer report incorrectly states that only two BSCs have been put forward. I understand that ordinarily the proposal would be permitted development and this is not disputed. In 1996, the appeal inspector made absolutely clear that imposition of the condition was to control future development rather than to prevent it. The additional space would meet a demonstrable need for my family that would usually be secured under permitted development rights. In summary, we believe that the proposal amounts to an appropriate development and this is reinforced by council. In the alternative, it is Council's opinion that there is a strong BSC case to be argued where the level of potential green belt harm is very low and there is no other planning harm. It is hoped that the committee will be able to grant tonight, but if not, we would welcome a deferment and site visit. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much for that. Um, any further questions based on that statement? No? Okay. Um, all right then. So if there's no further questions, we'll then go into the debate phase. Sorry, could I, oh. sorry I've got Certainly. one question. Thank you. It, it was a point Mr Taylor made earlier uh, that in principle, if this building was to go ahead at the moment, although this, the, the, the speaker has just said that it is for their personal hobby, this this would be designed as a garage maintenance workshop that could in the future become a commercial entity if, if a future owner of it chose to. Would that be possible? The, thank you, Chair. The application is for a garage extension to an existing outbuilding. It's a householder application. If um, the council weren't recommend, if officers weren't recommending the application be refused in principle, um, contrary to Greenbelt policy and, it, and for argument's sake, say it was considered acceptable, um, there, there would be a perfectly reason, be a reasonable opportunity to include a condition ensuring that its use would be ancillary um, to the use, the residential use of the property, and for not for commercial purposes. Um, and that I should, I should add, there is no. Uh, you know, implication that this would be for commercial use anyway. Um, but, um, you know, from an officer's perspective, our hands are tied regarding the acceptability of this in Greenbelt, unfortunately. Okay, uh, Councillor Piccolo. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, <coughs> I'm, I'm very conscious uh, <coughs> that it's on Greenbelt and we don't want to see Greenbelt sprawl um, <coughs> in Thurrock. But on this occasion, I'm wondering whether, and, and one was asked, whether it'd be worth having a site visit so that we could actually see what the impact might be. Um, because it seems to me, from what's being said, the only impact is going to be within the, within the, um, <coughs> within the area of the, set of, the of, of the actual development of that, of that house. Um, 
it doesn't seem to me that it's going to have a big impact anywhere else. So, you know, I, I, I personally think I'd like to go and uh, visit the site to, to get a clearer picture of what's going on. Okay, thank you. Um, so obviously I think we've just jumped into debate phase. Um, but uh, yeah, no, that's absolutely fine because we was I think we was heading there anyway. There's no further questions. Um, okay, so I understand what you're saying there, Councillor Piccolo. Um, what we'll do is we'll grab other people's opinions. Um, if this is is something that, that they like, then obviously yeah, we could do a site visit. If if the numbers are not there and, and people are against this, then uh, we might as well come to some form of conclusion this evening. So um, I won't say anything just yet. I'll, I'll I'll let everyone else chip in and, and we'll come to some form of conclusion. Um, I did see Councillor Arnold's hand up. Anyone else, uh, Councillor Lydiard? Thank you, Chair. I mean, obviously, obviously it's uh, at your discretion. Obviously, obviously, uh, consult with our members. I, I personally don't need a site visit. I think the drawings are quite clear. Um, for me, it's the words that actually it's hidden from view. Um, answers a lot of my questions that are going around in my head anyway. Um, I, I don't need a site visit. I think I can determine this from, from what's in the report. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councillor Lydiard. Thanks, Chair. Yeah, I think um, if it was a single car garage, I, I'd be feeling quite sympathetic. But the size of it, I mean, it's, it's a four car garage. I think it's a bit excessive uh, for my liking. Uh, any further comments there? Uh, Councillor Maney? Thank you, Chair. Um, this might come under what Councillor Polly said, I, I don't know. Um, I forgive my ignorance, but th this this at a later date couldn't go because of the sheer size of it. Couldn't then become a residential dwelling, could it? Chair, may I answer? Because I know you're in debate phase. Um, the application again is is for an extension. If I go back to, if, it, if we don't mind going back to the images, the site. So the application is for an extension to an outbuilding. So looking at the site plan there, the building um, in the more southern half of the site relates to the dwelling. The building to the northern half is the existing outbuilding. The smaller building in front of that is the garage. The proposal would sit immediately north and physically attached to the existing outbuilding. So it's quite a substantial footprint already, um, which, is, which is why those permitted development rights are restricted and why unfortunately this does conflict with Greenbelt policy, but with specific uh, in answering your question regarding could this be a dwelling, if this were approved and the um, the garage, um, up, a garage extension to the existing outbuilding was built, any proposal to convert that outbuilding so, to a different use, such as a separate dwelling, would require additional planning permission anyway, and that has not been sought under this application, and it's not what we're considering this evening. Sorry, Chair, I've disrupted that and between Big Council Plicker and I with question. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, any any further comments there? Obviously, uh, the idea of a site visit has been mentioned or if, uh, if, if members want to go ahead with the, with the officer recommendation, just looking for a few more comments. Um, Do we want to see it? Oh, no, sorry. Um, Councillor Polly, did you have any comments before we head to a vote? Uh, no, thank you. Oh. No, uh, Councillor Shinnick, thank you. Yeah, um, I have no problem this going through because, you know, we've put green belt of 125 houses through 250 houses on green belt. And this extension on this property, you know, I think would be much of a problem for me to put through things. Okay, Councillor uh, Polly. Thank you, Chair. Um, the extension, as we've, as has been explained to us, is on the side of a pool house as well. I'm not. Obviously, it's down to the individual applicant and it's their property. But to have a four-car garage that, by their own statement to us, is for maintenance, repair, with noises. You, you know. Repairs to vehicles are noisy. You need engines running. You, um, if you if you're doing bodywork repair as well, you, you you've got you know spray machines, things like that. I, um, 
me personally, if that was my Paul house, I wouldn't want all those fumes and and all that disruption next to a, a pool house. But uh, I mean, that that that's the applicant's choice. But it, it it just seems a very unnatural pairing for me. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, any any further comments before we uh, come to some form of conclusion? Um, no? Okay. All right then. So, yeah, th these ones are always difficult because ultimately, um, looking at the history, looking at the recent uh, appeal decision, ultimately it, it is, whether we like it or not, uh, generally against the, the consensus of, of planning. Having said that, um, you always want to be sympathetic on applications that will generally help people get what they, what they require on their property. And... Um, Ultimately, no one's complaining, and, and that's uh, th that's really where the planning committee comes in, where we can say, well, look, um, can we have a, a, a come to some form of different conclusion? There is some council advice, which has obviously been picked up on on the recent appeal decision. Um, so I'm I'm sort of I'm, I'm open to uh, at least taking a look um, and and potentially uh, siding with Councillor Piccolo, uh, but. Um, Look, if you if you think this is a if this is a no goer, then 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 vote against that. Um, uh, so with that, um, if if no one else has anything else to say, there was a, a recommendation from from, from Councillor Piccolo for a site visit. I'll second that. Um, are you happy for us to head to the boat there, Ian? Yep. Okay. okay. All right. So all those uh, in favour of Councillor Piccolo's recommendation of a, a site visit, please raise your hand. Okay, so that was three, vi uh, three votes in favour of a site visit. All those against? Okay, thank you. Um, so that, that, that was defeated, that. We, we've, uh, the site visit has been uh, lost. And uh, are there any further comments before we head to the recommendation? Uh, Councillor Watson, thank you. Thank you. I think we've come across many of these, especially in Orsett and Dan Bolfen and Haunted on the Hill that we've had to sit and think about. And um, to be honest with you, um, I'm probably in the same might as that you you can't see it from the front. It's on somebody's land. You know, it, they're taking up, how many feet are they taking up? I'm, I'm not me, a person. I'm not me, a person. <laughs> I'd have to quickly work that out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, it, it's taken up some feet. <laughs> 450. Huh? 450 square feet. Probably. So, um, it's there the family wants to live there for, for forever. Um, and to be honest, I'm quite in favour for it. Because it, it just stops all of the, all the noise that's going outside any, anyway. And I don't think it's... And I'm one of the green green space people, and I don't think it's that detrimental to what it is. It's a bit like what we've done with the Allsit one and what we've done with the Horndon one. And I get it that we have to do it on each other one, on its merit, but on this occasion, I'm quite in favour for it to happen. 645 square feet. Sorry. Okay, thank you. Um, any further comments? I mean, I mean, for me personally, I, I need to see it before um, before I can give approval. I'm not, I'm not saying I'm, I'm for or against. Uh, obviously, it is against obviously recommendations, and I, and I think for me, whilst no one's complained, I, I need to. I do. That's that's one of the reasons I want to do that site visit because I, I just think it's it's so heavily weighted against obviously recommendations, and uh, obviously we've had an appeal decision dismissed there. Um, there's I, I can't unfortunately. Uh, approve it this evening without that site visit. Um, so, and and of, um, I can't. Uh, that's that's where I am with it personally. Um, and and if we're not going to do that respectfully, I, I, unfortunately, I can't. Um, I can't support the application. Um, does anyone have any other ideas or suggestions, or um, we'll, we'll just come to some form of conclusion? Um, Councillor Watson, if it means that much to you, we'll do a site visit. <laughs> but if if you if it, if the if it's torn that much, go on a side visit. Okay. Um, let me let me just double check. Um, I just need to confer.
Okay then, look, um, first time I think we've, we've, we've had this scenario, but look, um, in, in, in quite some time, but it, it happens. Um, I've just conferred with our, with our officers there, and um, I can use my discretion to have a revote, and um, we, we don't believe there's any issues with that, and obviously if there are any issues, then we can address it at the next meeting anyway, um, but in the meantime, um, we, we can have that revote with, with my discretion. So I would recommend a site visit, is that seconded? Councillor uh, Jackie Maney, thank you. Okay, so all those in favour of the site visit, please raise your hands. Four, yeah. Okay. Yep. Okay, and uh, all, all, all those against? Okay, thank you. All right then, so uh, we've um, Greysteads, Parkers Farm Road. Agenda item eight has been deferred for a site visit. Thank you, everyone, for your contributions there. Um, cheers. Okay, thank you. Right, so that takes us to our last two items on the agenda. Um, there's a, uh, the, it takes us to a, a garage site on Lynhurst Road, Corringham. And uh, Nadia, I understand this is your second of three applications. Thank you. Yes, it is, Chair. Thank you. And I've, no I've noted the, the details regarding the site visit, and I'll sort things out in the coming weeks. So this, this application um, relates to the garage site in Lyndhurst Road in Corringham. Um, and the proposal is a Thorpe Council application um, relating to the redevelopment of a garage court site to the rear of residential properties in Lyndhurst Road and um, Mackley Drive in Corringham. Two pieces of ha housekeeping to update members on first. Um, the first is that since the agenda was published, we've had an additional letter of objection from a local resident raising similar concerns to those already mentioned in the report. So there's nothing new to add except that we've had a further objection. And the second matter relates to uh, a plan reference update. The proposed site plan and proposed ground floor plan references 003 and 001 respectively which are in the plans table on the front page of your uh, agenda item and indeed on uh, page 43 under condition 2 have actually been revised and updated so they should actually be read as 003 rev b and 001 rev b respectively as new plans have been received today these plans have been incorporated in my presentation and I'll explain the exact changes as we go through. Um, the site is designated for residential uses in the adopted local plan and there is no in-principle objection to the proposals. The existing site comprises two halves effectively. To the western side lies the remaining garage blocks which are underused and accessed from two accesses in Lyndhurst Road to the southwest and south of the site. The other half of the site comprises several remaining garages and extensive areas of hard surfacing where the majority of garages have long been demolished. And the site is divided by palisade fencing and a line of mature established trees running diagonally within the site. This can be seen there. This is a revised, um, this is the revised proposed site layout received um, today. The changes made to this plan relate to the length of the rear pedestrian access on that northeastern boundary. So if you can see my mouse here, the, the current plan that is referred to in the agenda item before you and up until very recently showed the rear access way stopping partway across the rear of number four Mackley Drive. Um, that has since been revised to extend the full width of the rear of that property on Mackley Drive to pick up the rear access leading into that site. And it's a small but very important change. And um, uh, the proposal overall seeks to redevelop the site to provide six two-storey houses. A short terrace of four three-bedroom units are proposed to be sited immediately south of the existing terrace front in Lyndhurst Road. These four dwellings would be well positioned and follow the existing pattern of development locally. A pair of semi-detached dwellings would be sited to the northeastern corner of the site and overall would be accessed via internal access roads that exist on site leading to the units. 
Parking provision would be made to the south and northeastern boundaries of the site, and the majority of the existing accesses would remain. This is a more detailed pl plan of the proposed site layout, showing the ground floors, again recently revised as previously mentioned. Several of the surrounding neighbours on Mackley Drive, have it, which is this area here, these properties here that back onto the site, have existing rear accesses to their gardens via the site. All of these dwellings would retain their existing access arrangements with exception to number two Mackley, which is the most north, northern um, dwelling that backs onto the site because this actually would retain a, a separate side access side back gate from the front of the property into the rear garden. Um, in particular, this updated plan recently received from the agent shows number four's existing rear access would be retained. The proposal would provide acceptable overlooking distances for surrounding neighbours and um, acceptable privacy amenity space provision and parking provision in accordance with council policies. While some vegetation would be lost, the line of trees within the site here would be retained as can be seen. Here are some elevations of the proposal. So the uppermost drawing shows the terrace of four in the context of the immediate street scene on Lyndhurst. Yeah. And the dwellings would be built using um, uh, traditional brick built uh, units um, and, and uh, materials and would feature solar panels on the roofs. And the same design approach would be taken on the pair of semis in the northeastern part of the site. This is a detailed elevation of one of the terraces along with a floor plan, plan for the three bed unit. And um, this is a closer elevation of one half of the semi-detached pair and the floor plan showing the two bed unit. And some images of the site for you. So the uppermost, well, both of these images here show the site when viewed from Lyndhurst. So, and you can see clearly the, the identified area where the terrace would be located within the street scene. And that's looking across into the site as well in the top image there. Some images of the garage court from within the site looking out. And of the southern access points leading into the garage court. And this is the other half of the site I was referring to earlier where you have the trees and the palisade fencing. And the bottom right hand image there shows the rear access gates number four Mackley Drive and their existing outbuilding there, which would the access to which would continue to be retained by the proposal. Um, to summarise, these proposals would be acceptable in principle and would comply with all technical policies in relation to amenity space, parking and highway matters and neighbour amenity impacts. The development would provide, crucially, six affordable housing units and would be operated by the council and the application is recommended for approval as per page 57. Okay, thank you. Uh, that then opens it up to questions. Who would like to start with any particular questions here this evening? Uh, Councillor Arnold, thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, thank you for your report. Um, I was wondering if you might just be able to explain to the committee and maybe to anyone interested in looking at the uh, live stream, what, what steps you're taking to actually future-proof these buildings? I think we all must have an eye on the future. Solar panels, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, I know a few applications have gone through fairly recently where these things have been absent and I have picked up subsequently from those. Um, can you just explain to us actually what you're doing to, with these buildings that enable us to go to the future? Thank you. Yes, Chair, I'm happy to. And uh, this particular proposal has been subject to pre-application advice. Um, it, very similar to the previous council applications, I'm thinking of the Vigorans Way one in September and the Broxbourne Drive one as well recently. With this one, I, I dealt with the pre-application before the application came in and one of the key criteria is that we wanted to ensure it did include um, as much sustainable elements in terms of its design and its features as possible. So we do have um, renewable energy by virtue of the solar panels on the roof of, any, of all of the units. And um, we've got um, a, a 
a particularly good standard of noise insulation um, within the windows on the units as well. Thank you. I mean, I'm encouraged by that. It was obviously just referring back to these previous ap applications and you, <laughs> you're smiling. Um, yeah, you're well aware of that. I mean, I will now in future actually be sort of highlighting up, up on this kind of thing because it's, I think it's been lacking in previous applications and, and I think it now needs to be 100% included every single time. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, any further questions? Uh, Councillor Watson, then back to Councillor Arnold. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Julian, um, can you just, are you confident, are you happy enough about the width for that road going up with the cars to car, park around the back? Because it looks really quite narrow. And are you also confident enough that the waste disposal can actually get up there comfortably? I know they can do a turn. And if any cars, because if those parking bays are full, then you're not going to be able to do a crossover there. It looks like it's just one car in, one car out at the same time. Thank you, Chair. Uh, well, as you can see, there, there are actually two, two, two routes in. So p potentially, obviously, the, the, yeah, you're right. It, it is narrower than we w would expect for, for two cars, but there are actually two, two routes in. It's it has been previously used in that respect in terms of access for the garages, so that hasn't really raised a concern for us. Uh, in terms of refuge collection, uh, We've obviously che checked that and the, the refuse people are happy w with the proposal they've got for the refuse collection. So uh, we, we don't see any problems from a highways point of view with the, with the application. Jeff, I may as well, um, just to answer Councillor Watson's query further, um, with this particular layout you're looking at, we did request the, that amenity green be cut further back, as is shown, to allow that extra bit of space um, to allow for manoeuvring of refuse bi uh, the bin men. Okay, thank you. And Councillor Arnold, uh, thank you. Thank you, Jay. I forgot something. Um, yeah, I took the opportunity a couple of days ago to actually have a little drive and walk around the site. I mean, I know the site very well from my younger years. Um, <laughs> um, I mean, I was, I was going to ask a question about the access into the site off of Lindhurst, the main, the main part of Lindhurst. Although it's, I mean, I've not got the biggest car in the world, um, but there was ample space to actually drive down it. But my, but my main question is, all of that area, the, 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 the driving area is quite rough, muddy, bumpy, and et cetera, et cetera. Um, is that all going to be properly landscaped, properly brick paved, whatever you need to do, is that's all going to be taken care of, is it? Uh, yes, Chair, I can confirm that. That's all included in the conditions in terms of the um, hard, hard and soft landscaping, absolutely. Um, and I've, I've been down both accesses um, on the site, including this morning in, in the rain, and, I c you know, yeah, the surfacing in both, is it, it differs. Um, but um, the, this proposal, you would not have that same surfacing and it would be replaced appropriately. Okay, thank you. Um, any further questions? No? Okay then. All right then. So we'll move on to um, statements on this uh, application. Uh, the first uh, uh, statement is a statement of objection uh, from, a, uh, from a Mel Thomas, a uh, neighbour in the area. Uh, Mel, if you'd like to come forward and uh, you have uh, three minutes in which to uh, present your case. Thank you. Good evening. Um, I'm actually not against this plan at all. I actually think it's going to be good for the area, and I've met with the people before that designed the area. The houses look really good. They're green, environmental and everything. That is fine. The objection I had was my, ha my gateway, which I need to take my son's bikes through, has been used five days a week, every week, to get my son to work. He, um, he's disabled. He won't do public transport. I needed back access. They, these new plans have put the back access back in, so I'm happy with those. As long as it's the width, I can get a push bike down. 
I am more than happy with these plans. The only thing that does worry me with this is the only way into this site is through Mackley Drive, and it's the main, main way into the whole estate in Corinham. I don't know if you know Corinham at all, but if you go into Corinham, the only way into that estate with the houses, the flats, the school, every amenity in that area is through Mackley Drive. And it is like a racetrack at the moment, and there is constant arguments and rows for people coming racing down, and literally, it's arguments. So could we not look into highway maintenance, creating another entry somewhere, by the flats or by the bus stop or somewhere, to bring the work lorries in and to other traffic? Because at the moment, Mackley Drive is just such a hard place to live. If I could pick my house and move it out of Mackley Drive to get away from the, just the traffic coming through, I would. But I've got seven children, three of them are disabled. And at the moment, that is the only objection I've got. I think the housing is really good, the plans are nice, uh, they've been well thought out, well designed, but can you please look at highway maintenance to do something about the entrance and exits into the estate? Okay. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much for that statement. And uh, with that, we'll also invite a uh, statement of support from New Ground Architects. If you'd like to come forward, and you have three minutes in which to present your case. Thank you. Um, thank you, Chair and Councillors, for the opportunity to speak tonight in support of the scheme. Um, as we all know, a shortage of affordable housing in the UK presents a pressing challenge at the moment. And um, we've worked with the Council to develop proposals for the project at Lindhurst Road, which showcase the potential of Council-owned infill sites to contribute to housing provision while at the same time offering real benefits to local communities. Um, the redevelopment will provide much needed new homes to modern standards, while also improving the existing context and public realm, with benefits for residents in terms of security, connectivity and amenity. The 67 um, underused garages in the area that had become prone to antisocial behavior and fly tipping are proposed to be replaced by six new affordable homes, um, three, uh, four three-bedroom houses and two two-bedroom houses. Each two-story dwelling is laid out as dual aspect to optimize daylight and natural ventilation. And all homes will have front garden areas for defensible space to the street, as well as generous private rear gardens, each with gated access. Um, the buildings, as discussed earlier, are designed to be sustainable with a fabric first approach, meaning that they're highly insulated and airtight, reducing energy demand at source and addressing fuel poverty by minimizing energy bills. The latest sustainable technologies are also incorporated, including the um, photovoltaic panels mentioned earlier, but also um, air source heat pumps for heating and hot water, um, along with the renewed renewable energy provision. The homes are designed around a central green space, which is accessible from the new homes and also from the existing houses with the access from the rear gardens retained in all cases. Um, careful consideration has been given to the retention of the existing trees, which obviously contribute to the, the site's leafy character. Um, landscaping across the site is proposed to improve the public realm, providing access for pedestrians, parking, emergency and service vehicles. Large areas of green are proposed in the form of planting adjacent to the existing trees, complemented by smaller areas of greenery in various locations across the site. The 13 new car parking spaces are provided on site, along with the required cycle refuse and recycling provision. Um, and the car parking provision also includes electric vehicle charging points to add to the sustainability goals. Um, careful attention has been given throughout the design and consultation process to reasonably address the comments received from the neighboring community. The replacement of garages on site with new homes was justified by the fact that only a small proportion of the garages were in use. Um, the condition of these garages meant they had reached the end of their practical life 
and the isolated nature and layout had proven particularly problematic, leading to antisocial behavior. Alternative garages to modern standards in close proximity have been offered as a replacement where required. Overall, um, the intention has been to provide the best possible homes and public space for residents, while also delivering a development of appropriate scale, orientation and detail to complement the existing context and to enhance the adjacent neighborhood and community. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much for that statement. Okay, uh, right, uh, on to further questions based on those statements. Um, would anyone, any additional comments? Um, I suppose, Julian, obviously there were some comments there about the, the general conditions of the road, that highway maintenance, traffic in the area. Um, obviously, is there anything planned uh, in that area and can anything come off, off this particular application to improve um, uh, access? Uh, not as far, not as far as I'm aware. It, uh, uh, the lady did mention construction traffic. Obviously, w we can limit that through a same condition in terms of uh, um, when larger lorries can come in and come out. Bear in mind the location. Yes, it is very close to Giffard, so we would condition then the fact that obviously the lorries would come in and out outside of school peak times. In the, in the mornings and, and the afternoons so that we limit deliveries in, in terms of that. In terms of if, if there are issues with the condition of the, of the road, I will pass that on to our highways maintenance team to have a look at. That's not an issue that we resolve. In, in terms of the site, um, it, it's not of a sufficient side to, to, to warrant uh, mitigation of resurfacing roads that are not directly uh, associated with the development unfortunately okay but um obviously you, you, you can take that forward and, and ask the relevant um yeah department. i'll ask our highways maintenance team to 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 have a look at the the, the, the state of mackley drive and the associated roads yeah okay thank you uh, any further questions um uh, councillor watson thank you sorry nadia can i just ask a quick question you know um on your plan here you've got a blue line then you've got the red line. So what's the line in between? Chair, if I may, that relates to land that's within the council's ownership but not forming part of the actual application site. That's currently parking um, that's used locally. If I may have a photograph of that area. Yeah. Um, if we're able to share, Rhiannon, uh, again, um, in the bottom image there, you'll see um, a red line boxed area which shows the location of the terrace on Lyndhurst. In, immediately forward of that, you can see off-street parking spaces just off, off of Lyndhurst Road, and that's current parking that will remain on site. That's um, there in that bottom image there where the white van is. That's not within the application site, but those parking spaces will, will remain, and uh, it's just indicating land that the council also owns. So we, we haven't got any unmarked alleyways that nobody's going to own. They're going to be in our remit. Because no, what I'm worried about is I don't want a development with a gap in between it. Like, no. I understand you go you have a buffer, but not a gap, because yep. we've got issues with unadopted alleyways all over the place. No, I, I fully appreciate that concern ra raised by, by Councillor Watson, Chair. And um, just looking at this most recent revised site plan, um, that actually shows... That all areas within the red line and where development would be occurring and even where we're retaining that rear access way say for example um, which you know you could consider an alleyway leading to the backs of those gardens on on Mackley Drive that would still be treated and and uh, looked after in the same way the rest of the site would have its hard and soft landscaping so it's all within our ownership and control um, if I, if I may chair as well just picking up on what was said regarding um, traffic and concerns about construction and the access and so on um, on uh, I'm looking at a different thing let me just make sure I'm putting up on the agenda in your, in your condi conditions as Julian referred to we do have a condition regarding the construction management plan on page 58 but also conditions relating to hours of work and, um, and landscaping, highways access details, parking provision and retention and waiting restrictions all detailed 
in your conditions there, which hopefully provides some comfort to members as well. Okay, thank you. Um, so that will then take us on to uh, the debate phase before we come to a conclusion. Uh, who would like to first discuss um, this application? Councillor Arnold, thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, li listening to the comments from uh, Mrs. Thomas, I, uh, or Mel Thomas, um, yeah, I do pick up on that, actually. I mean, I, again, I, I, I know the area very well. The, the co-op shop in Gardner Avenue is my local shop. I'm frequently there. Um, and I do understand the comments about the, the, the through traffic through Mackley Drive. Um, yes, the, I mean, the access routes, I mean, it, that, that, that estate there is really quite a relic of many years ago. I don't think they really th properly considered this estate. I know I'm, I'm going off, off piece here with, with the application, but, it's, but it is really lacking in um, access points, maybe off of South Inbold or Spring House. It would have... I mean, there's uh, hundreds of properties there, and it's, it's, it beggars belief why no ec other access points weren't put in in the first place. Um, but in saying that, it, we are only looking at six properties here. Um, and I think this site, this site is, lends itself extremely well to that, and it's, and it's good, because I, I think a more ambitious um, scheme could have come in where they were maybe trying to squeeze more on. And, it, and I think this actually is, is, is nicely well proportioned. They're modern homes. It's on a generous plot. There's a nice bit of green space there. I mean, I, I welcome this application. Like I said, it's only six more homes, but it's it's got to be better than the garage block. So, uh, thank you very much, yeah. Okay, thank you, uh, Councillor Polly. Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, and we, I'd like to thank Mel Thomas and the other members of the public that actually come and participate in the in the committees because it is always. Um, important for members to hear um, residents' points of view. Um, it was refreshing as well uh, to hear somebody compliment the consultation process um, that, that was given our earlier debate on another application. So um, I think that has to be acknowledged that, it, you know, when things are done well, let's, let's celebrate them and perhaps we can learn from this particular applicant um, and, and perhaps use some of their um, methods to guide other applicants. Um, as, as regards the access point and the, the higher, the, the bigger picture on the highways, uh, if you could indulge me, Chair, I, I might say to Mel Thomas, the local development plan is something we're consulting at the moment. If you want to go online, yeah, that that is where to be putting those comments in. They'll be really helpful to to. Yeah, thank you for that. So that it, yeah, that would be really good if we could, um, it, and that helps shape the future. Um, on this particular application, I, I I think again we we have to acknowledge the work that our officers do um, in in bringing these reports to committee. I think I. And when we ask the questions, the, the level of knowledge and the answers that we get back just shows that how detailed they are. And I'd like to acknowledge that as well. Thank you um, for supporting us as well as you do. I, I think this is now the third application that we've seen where, you know, we as an authority are actually trying to deliver some more affordable social, social housing. And and within the council's remit, that, to have the confidence that, that these are to help deal with our current residents' housing issues, I think is something um, that is to be celebrated as well. I, I'd, I'm glad to see, as, as other members have mentioned, that the fault of velvet cells, the, the consideration to long-term homes, um, future-proofing, as Councillor Arnold put it so well. Um, I, I, I think there's a lot to be uh, celebrated in this application. Thank you, Chair. Okay, thank you. I'll go to Councillor Piccolo and Councillor Watson. Thank, thank you, Chair. Uh, I've just been re-looking over the papers again. <coughs> and whilst I can understand um, the residents' concern, um, over the uh, 
the vehicles using um, access in on the estate. There's only 12 parking spaces there. Um, I know it hasn't been, the garages haven't been used for a while, but there were 67 garages there, which means potentially there were 67 vehicles moving up and down into that little alleyway. Um, there's only going to be 12 now. So I totally accept that the problems you're concerned with, but technically you could say it's, it's, it's saved the chance of those cut garages coming back into use <laughs> um, and, and, and may benefited us with housing and also benefited the residents to a certain extent in that you know, they're not going to have that amount of traffic usage in that area in the future. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, Councillor Watson and then Councillor Shinnick. Thank you, Chair. Um, the council houses, the affordable council houses, which we don't really get through, and they seem to be synthetically put in like quite nicely. I have got reservations on the access road, but I believe that you're all confident enough that you could uh, deal with that, Julian, to be honest with you. Um, and I do understand what the residents is, is actually saying. And we, we need to consider some of the, some of the aspects that the residents have that we wouldn't even take or have knowledge of. Um, so I will be supporting this plan. Um, and I, and I do like the way it's set up. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Shinnick. Thank you, Chair. Um, I welcome this application. I think it's something that we needed in Borough, more two bedroom properties, and I will be voting for it. Uh, Councillor Lydiard. Uh, and just to add to all the comments that have been made so far, it's gonna be, a, a fantastic improvement in terms of any social behaviour at the back of these properties. So there might be some, you know, minor issues, but uh, overall, it'd be a major success. Okay, thank you. And um, that's everyone, I think. Excellent. All right then, so um, there is a recommendation, uh, 8.0 on page uh, 57. Uh, who would like to recommend uh, Councillor Shinnick, uh, seconded by Councillor Watson. Um, and we'll head to the vote there. Um, all those in favour of application agenda item nine, uh, please raise your hand. I think that's unanimous. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> First one tonight. Oh, you're good. <coughs> you're good. <coughs> Excellent. So that's it. agenda item nine, garage site, Lindhurst Road. Um, has been approved, which yeah, yeah. We'll, give you, we'll just have a, 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 a quick recession there. Thank you. A toilet break if anyone wants to use that. Person. Thank you.
Okay, excellent. Thank you, thank you everyone for that. And uh, this then now takes us on to the last item on the agenda. Uh, agenda item 10, which is Treetop School, Buxton Road. And Nadia, would you be so kind as to present the last report? Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Yes, I shall. If we can share again, Rhiannon, that'd be super. Thank you. And um, uh, this shouldn't take especially long, I'm hoping. Right, so Treetop School. So this is a full planning... Oh, sorry, just uh, briefly, oh, we've just been reminded uh, I'd like to extend uh, standing orders until we uh, discuss the rest of the agenda. Is that agreed? Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Sorry, it was just the adjournment there. We just no. sneaked into thank half you, past. Chair. Thank you, and thank you, Councillor uh, Polly, for highlighting that. Um, Nadia, thank you. Yes, thank you, Chair. So Treetop School, this is a full planning application submitted by Treetop School. Um, I'm sure all members here are familiar with exactly where treetop school is in the borough so it lies south of Stamford Road in the image there and is accessed directly off of Buxton Road and lies within the Greenbelt. So the application site lies within the Greenbelt and relates specifically to the existing minibus garage at the treetop school site outlined in red on the image before you. The proposal seeks no operational development but the change of use from educational uses to a dual education and community use to enable the building to be converted to be used as a gym to provide fitness programs for SEN pupils at the three schools on the wider treetop site and to the wider SEN community. Here's an elevation of the existing uh, minibus garage building and again there's no physical changes to the building's exterior. Here's a floor plan of the building. As you can see, um, activity, uh, as you can see activities, as you can see, the garage would remain as essentially one large room um, to allow for the activities and the provision of, a, of gym, gym exercise equipment and so on within. And some images of the site. So the left-hand photograph there is of the minibus garage taken from Stamford Road. And so you can see it in the context from the north. And from within the treetop site, on the right-hand image, the garage is in the distance there. And another one of the minibus garage and of its interior. And the wider context of the site. So this is standing at its northernmost edge of the site in the left image with the garage in the, in the background. And the right-hand image shows the general context with the um, original Treetops Academy on the left-hand side. And in the distance on the right is the new Treetops Free School that's more recently constructed. Um, I, I took this photograph because I, one of the questions we asked the Treetops uh, School was where the parking of the minibuses would occur, if not immediately outside the garage, um, where else would they be used when they're not in use? And there is an area they've identi identified between the new Treetops Academy and the sports hall, which is securely fenced off in the image there on the left, where any, gar any, any minibuses that aren't used would be parked up and stored. Um, and again, the image on the right just shows the wider context of the site. And this is the view northwards, looking at the new access road from Stamford Road down into treetops that's currently under construction. Um, I took this photograph and was quite excited about it, actually, because I know members and residents have been uh, wanting this for, for a long time now. So I was quite pleased with the progress, even just two weeks ago. Um, but in discussing it with our highways colleagues earlier today, I understand that there's already tarmac going down. So that's quite, that's quite good, well, it's good to know. Um, the proposed change of use would be acceptable in principle. The gym would be used by the SEND pupils within the tree, Treetops Learning Community Trust, so that's all of the schools on the wider site, as well as by SEND community groups locally. Uh, with respect to neighbour amenity impacts, highway and traffic impacts, there will be no, no significant concerns raised and there will be full compliance with council policies and it's recommended to members for approval, subject to conditions in your agenda. Okay, thank you. Uh, I open up to questions. Does anyone have any questions here? Uh, no, no, I don't think any, any hands are raised there, other than, um, obviously, Julian, this is good news with the access there. Um, and I understand it will also feed opposite uh, the, the new school going up. Yep, brilliant. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Polly? Um, perhaps not necessarily a purist planning um, question, but th the gym is being run by the actual trust, by the actual treetop school, and, and is designed for 
sort of um, the, the pupils within, is, is that correct? Uh, yes, Chair. So the proposed gym is going to be controlled and run by the Treetops Community Learning Trust and would be operated by those schools. Um, it would be mainly used during school hours for the same pupils. Any use outside of school times by local community groups is purely by the control of the schools and by no other bodies at all. Thank you very much for that. OK, thank you. Um, any further questions? No? OK, then. Uh, we do have no speaker statements on this uh, application. Uh, so, who, who, are there any comments on this um, application before we come to a conclusion? Uh, Councillor Arnold and uh, Councillor Main. Lovely, just throw one out there, really. I mean, just the new access road, fantastic. I mean, uh, it's long, long, long overdue. Fantastic. Uh, Councillor Main? No, just... Fantastic. OK, then. Uh, Councillor Polly? Uh, I, I just think that this is, uh, again, in support of treetops, uh, they are an outstanding SEN facility. And in fact, we have known it to be a, a bit of a victim of its own success in, in that people were fighting outside the borough and inside the borough to get the children into this facility. Um, the, the, the particular gym, knowing a lot of the pupils that will have... Um, perhaps non-conformist uh, physical problems would, would be bespoke to their conditions, which I think is, is something that we can only celebrate and they, um, I, I very much welcome this and I think it's a good thing. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So, uh, uh, Councillor Shinnick. Yeah, I welcome this. I think it's going to be a great facility for the pupils and people of the community. Thank you. Brilliant, thank you. Okay then, right, so uh, with that, um, uh, who would like to recommend uh, approval? Uh, Councillor Polly, uh, seconded by Councillor Lydiard. Um, the recommendation is set out on page 74, uh, 8.0 recommendation for approval. Uh, all those in favour? Okay, excellent, thank you. That's uh, unanimous, okay, all right, brilliant. Excellent, well look. Uh, thank you, uh, thank you everyone. Uh, uh, that is the uh, end of the meeting at uh, 2038. Thank you, have a safe trip home and uh, look forward to seeing you uh, next month. Brilliant, thank you. <laughs>